think particularly what has been a uh, a barrier for a lot of people isn't just the fact that Mary's the mother of God and therefore respected, but the devotion that Catholics have for Mary. And I was wondering if you could help maybe clear up a bit more the um, devotion aspect of um, Marian devotion. Like, you know, because sometimes it feels a bit too intense and someone's like, can we really say that about Mary? Yeah, a couple of things I'll say is, you know, the the Catholic beliefs about Mary and all the devotions, they're ultimately, they're all about Jesus. They're, they're meant to help us love Jesus more. Uh, I wanted to just highlight that. So everything we believe as Catholics, all the prayers, all the devotions we have, Mary doesn't want all the attention. It's, it's, we're doing that because it helps us to love and praise Jesus more. So just one, one thing I always like to highlight. But another thing I would say is, you know, I, I like to think about what I, I call the humanness of Mary. Uh, I, I often teach about the great doctrines of Mary and all, but sometimes we as Catholics can put Mary on such a high pedestal that we forget that she was human. She was one of us, you know, uh, given extraordinary graces, uniquely privileged, no doubt, but yet she still had to, you know, face moments of trial and difficulty, moments of uncertainty, moments when our world is turned upside down suddenly and she's wondering what's happening. There's times in the Bible where it says Mary did not understand, you know, so all she can do is sometimes just keep all these things and ponder them in her heart. And so there's a lot in Mary's life that, you know, that I think we can relate to and go, yeah, I've had times where my world's turned upside down. I don't know why this happened. I'm wondering, where are you, God? You know, Mary, if you ever have those moments, just know Mary did too. But the difference between Mary and us is that she responded, you know, in, in the best way possible. So she experienced, you know, being greatly troubled, you know, all these things. And, and, and I, I like to think of, I don't know if they have this, do they have this expression in New Zealand that Christians use here in the United States? WWJD. What would, what Jesus, would do? Jesus do? Right. I, I, they have that there. Right. Well, you know, I love thinking about that. And I want to imitate Jesus, but there's an element of, you know, but, but he's God, <laughs> you know, so, you know, if it's raining outside, he could go like this and make it stop. I just, I'm going to have to deal with it. <laughs> you know, uh, Jesus is divine and, and we want to imitate him because he shows us in his humanity, what the fullness of life is all about. So we are called to imitate Christ, but I like to think of WWMD. What would Mary do? You know, because yeah, because she actually, she's human, you know, she doesn't know everything that's going to happen. She doesn't have these divine powers that she can just call upon. And she, she has to respond to the trials of life from a human perspective and cooperate with God's grace. And I want to learn how to cooperate with God's grace in my life like she did. So the next time I'm troubled, I'm nervous about something, I, I'm feeling a little, you know, a little trepidation. I want to respond like she did. And one thing is that I like to bring out is how the Bible reveals her at the Annunciation, she's greatly troubled, but she rises above those troubled mm -hmm. feelings and she talks to God and asks God for help. And as I love thinking about that, I like thinking about Mary at the Nativity, you know, when she's watching her son be born in these austere conditions, you know, when he's, you know, has to put this baby in a manger, you know, just think about that. I mean, we sing this song, away in the manger, you know, every Christmas, but that's a feeding trough for animals. What mom wants to put the baby where the goats are going to come eat, you know? And, and, and John Paul II reflected on how hard that would have been for Mary. That, mm. that Mary, you know, you know knows that, that, that this child's the holy son of God and he's being treated this way. And there's times when you might feel like you're not being treated well or things didn't work out the way you planned. And what do you do in those moments? I like to think about Mary's response. Uh, how she keeps all these things pondering in their heart where it, it's a biblical expression describing how she's, you know, she's talking to God, asking God, what are you trying to show me here, Lord? What are you trying to teach me through this little mm -hmm. trial? And anyway, we can get into all the stuff about Mary, but I, I think, you know, when I think about devotion to Mary, I like to think of her as most first and foremost as the model disciple. Mm -hmm. She really shows us, she's the, the, the premier example uh, a model for us to imitate uh, in, in, in our daily lives. Mm, that's beautiful. Yeah, and I think, you know, it always helps me. Um, the Magnificat is uh, that second joyful mystery when um, Elizabeth kind of compliments Mary saying, um, how blessed I am to have the mother of my Lord. And she says, turns out straight to God, my soul glorifies the Lord. And I try and think about that when um, I'm thinking about our devoted devotion practices to Mary.